coming up on Breeze TV. A health scare on the men's basketball team postpones their upcoming games. In the opiate crisis, hits home. I'm here at Massanutten Resort where I'm going to learn what it takes to be a figure skater. From the friendly city to yours. This is Breeze TV. Live from the Allison B. Parker studio in the School of Media Arts and Design at James Madison University, this is Breeze TV. Good morning, JMU, and happy Friday. I'm Olivia Gerald. And I'm Matt Wyrick. Thank you for joining us today on Breeze TV. We begin today's show with a report on the synthetic drug epidemic that is rapidly spreading in Virginia and raising concern for local police. Breeze TV's Madison Haynes joins us in the studio for more on that story. Madison? Thanks, Matt. Fentolin, a drug 100 times more potent than morphine, is circulating its way through the valley. It's being laced with other drugs, potentially creating a deadly high for users. Just this year, HPD has reported three fentanyl overdoses, one of which resulted in death. Generally an opiate that uh, a lot of people use, they're commonly uh, known as heroin. When it's laced with fentanyl, a stronger opiate, it uh, gives the body a lot more damage. Fentanyl is a synthetic opiate, typically in a powdered form. HPD reports that it's almost impossible to tell when a drug is laced, therefore heightening the risk of an overdose or even death. It can be absorbed through your skin, through your eyes, uh, through any of your mucous membranes. So a very, very small amount is deadly. HPD has strict protocol when it comes to investigating any fentanyl-related cases. Generally, if there is a overdose that's related uh, to fentanyl, right away there's going to be a lot more uh, action taken as far as safety measures and personal protective equipment. With such a deadly drug circulating, the police department and the drug task force are working around the clock to protect the public. Reporting in studio, I'm Madison Haynes. Back to you, Matt. Thanks, Madison. Jewels are becoming a popular trend in the Harrisonburg area, but some users forget that jewels are not much different from cigarettes. Though the new fad is leaving a mark on consumers, JMU's smoking policy has not changed for jewels. Smoking is only allowed in uh, the outdoors of campus, uh, not within 25 feet of a building. So any building that the university owns or leases, uh, smoking is prohibited. If you are a user or plan to use in the future, remember that there are consequences for consuming on campus. Harrisonburg Public Works has installed yield signs along Mason Street, reminding vehicles to yield to pedestrians and crosswalks. They are working to increase public safety in these congested areas. The signs are on two corners where Mason Street crosses Water and Franklin Streets. The project, which was approved by the Transportation Safety and Advisory Commission, is geared toward resolving traffic problems using the least restrictive measures. In national news, Amazon is teaming up with Whole Foods on a brand new delivery service. This partnership is the latest outcome of Amazon's recent purchase of Whole Foods. The company announced that starting Thursday, Amazon Prime subscribers in Austin, Cincinnati, Dallas, and Virginia Beach will have access to thousands of Whole Foods items that can be delivered in just two hours. Amazon plans to extend the service across the United States later this year. The JMU men's basketball team postponed both of its home games this week after multiple coaches contracted the mumps. The mumps are highly contagious, so the coaches were quarantined to make sure the virus could be contained. Players and other staff members are also highly encouraged to get a mumps booster shot to prevent further spread of the virus. The Dukes will try to get the two games rescheduled for the end of the regular season, but the window of opportunity is shortly closing. All the schools and conference will get together early next week and talk about opportunities, but the window of opportunity is not very much. The likelihood of squeezing a game between the end of the season and the tournament is not high, so it's a matter of are there windows before the regular season ends where a game might make sense. Although JMU is working to reschedule those games, Warner says the athletic department's primary concern is that the coaches recover back to full health before taking the court again. In other news, Harrisonburg City Council ma City Manager Eric Campbell is happy to be back in Virginia and serving an area so close to home. Campbell is a native of Richmond and is coming to Harrisonburg after serving as Assistant City Manager in Dallas. 
January 16th was Campbell's first official day as Harrisonburg City Manager, and he is already excited about the friendly city's growth and potential. Overall, Harrisonburg is in a very good spot. It's growing. It has a lot of positive things going for it. Um, so really what I'm here and what I would like to do is try to enhance um, as it grows. Campbell looks forward to continuing to work with City Council and the public to better the community. Klein's Dairy Bar has hit a big milestone. The local ice cream shop has been a part of the Harrisonburg community for 75 years. Senior reporter Caitlin Merriman shows us more on their big celebration. Klein's is a hot spot in the area, providing unique flavors every week. It's the heart and part of the heart of the city and what makes Harrisonburg Harrisonburg. Every morning, the ice cream is handcrafted for the day. Each store makes their own ice cream right in the building. Sunday. I love Klein's because I love ice cream and their flavors are wonderful and they change so often. And when customers see their ice cream come out, their faces leave a mark on those who see them. <gasps> I didn't know it was going to be that big. And although Klein's changes their special flavors each week, some customers don't mind because they love the classics. But now. <laughs> Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Caitlin Merriman. Did you see that they had peanut butter, cookies and cream ice cream? Like together or separate? Together, like all one. In one ice cream. That just sounds amazing to me. Well, I wish they would make one with mint chocolate chip because that's my favorite. It's all right, second best. Coming up, people aren't the only ones with the flu. See what you can do to help your furry friends stay healthy this flu season. And Breeze TV's Ellie White tells us about accessibility at JMU. You know what guys, there's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. When it comes to saving money, uh, what? don't act like a baby. Oh, it's like they're having their own little meeting. This is so humiliating. Be the boss. I'm the boss. What the? Mm -hmm. Power nap. You were saying. And make a budget. Let's get to work. Need a little help? Stacy, read back the notes. I can't read. What's it say? Create a personalized savings plan and get other tools and tips. We can share. You obviously didn't go to business school. At feedthepig.org. Is Breeze TV. According to the U.S. Drought Monitor, 98% of Virginia is abnormally dry. Many counties in the northern Virginia and northern Piedmont regions are even experiencing severe drought conditions. While we have received some rain this week, it has not been enough to improve drought conditions in our area. If conditions do not begin to improve, more of the state may experience water restrictions, causing the chance of wildfires to increase. The flu is being spread at JMU, but not just to people. Furry friends in the area are showing signs and symptoms of illness. As flu season continues, many dog owners have reported that their pets have caught the contagious virus. The dog flu is found in two separate strains, and symptoms are similar to that of humans. Upper respiratory issues, coughing, sneezing, um, not eating, not feeling good, that kind of stuff. You can help protect your pets by avoiding any common places animals interact, such as dog parks and groomers. 
The school board met for the first time since the city council's ruling to push back the building of a new Harrisburg High School. Breeze TV's Anna Saunders is here in the studio to tell us more. Anna, where does the school board plan to go from here? Well, Matt, the school board knows a new high school will be built. It is just a matter of easing the struggles of overcrowding until 2023. While City Council's decision was disappointing for the school board, leading them to come up with temporary options, other members of the community considered it a victory. The City Council's decision to move back the building of the new Harrisonburg High School to 2023 was met with mixed responses. The group Students Over Structures, who was happy with the pushback, would like to see that money go elsewhere for now. Just because we don't think that you know you need to buy the most expensive school and spend every little dime on uh, architecture doesn't mean we're not for students. I think the money should go towards teacher pay increases. In response to the City Council's decision, the school board met on Tuesday to discuss what they will do now to relieve the overcrowding. Some options thrown out included staggering the schedule, adding an extra block to the school day, and adding more trailers to the property. For the students and faculty, with 500 students over capacity, it is about making the best of their crowded situation. I think people are very resilient. There's, I mean, obviously there's nothing that can be done right now. For now, the school board plans to potentially add more trailers to their campus, which could cost up to $300,000. Now back to you, Matt. Thanks, Anna. The FDA released a warning about an herb used against opiates. Kratom is a popular herbal supplement that substitutes opiates in providing pain relief. The FDA now says, however, that Kratom is not safe. The herb has been linked to 44 deaths, although scientists who work with the plant believe in its benefits. We definitely believe that this could be a solution to, or part of a solution to the opioid crisis that we're currently in. The Centers for Disease Control states that each day, an average of 115 Americans die from opiate overdose. Opiates are the cause of over 42,000 deaths in 2016. JMU's Office of Disabilities sets a goal to make campus accessible for all students and staff. Breeze TV reporter Ellie White tells us more. Getting around JMU is already a tough task. With all the hills and stairs, it can be a pretty great workout. The Godwin Stairs, also known as the Death Stairs, can be a nightmare, but it takes you straight to the top. Now imagine if you had a disability that prevented you from taking the stairs. Thomas Kidd is one of many who comes face to face with a challenging disability. Now I think JMU for the most part is pretty accessible. But one thing I can do is make more of the buildings accessible because some buildings they just have to move my class because I can't get to the building. It's fine because I still get to go to all my classes, but it'd be nice if I could just go to the same building as everyone else so they don't have to change stuff around as much. Disability Services focuses on bringing innovation and excellence through various accommodations. The goal is for all students to have an equal opportunity to succeed. Um, James Madison University's campus is generally accessible, like the buildings and stuff, but I think there's always room for improvement because what is accessible to one student may not be accessible to another. ODS encourages all students to express any accessibility issues you may face. Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Ellie White. The 2018 Winter Olympics has officially begun. Tonight, athletes from around the world will gather at the opening ceremony in Pyeongchang, South Korea. Breeze TV senior reporter Caitlin Merriman skates out of the studio and into the ice rink. Caitlin? Thanks, Matt. As you know, the Winter Olympics just began this past Wednesday, and I'm here with the figure skater herself, Mary Clem Staley. Mary, tell me what you're excited about with the Winter Olympics. I'm so excited to see my favorite skater skate. His name is Nathan Chen, and he can land a quadruple axle, and he's just our age, so it's so impressive, and I'm just thrilled to be able to watch it. Well, speaking of tricks, you're going to be showing me some today, right? Yeah, so I'm going to show you just a basic stroke, um, since you've never done this before. Yeah, fair warning. So what you're going to want to do is okay. you're going to step on to your little razor scooter. That's my analogy for okay. stroking. You're going to have your back blade at an angle, kind of almost perpendicular to your front skate. And then you're just going to push off with that back leg. <laughs> Coming up next, Kevin Rom has sports for us. What do we have, Kevin? Well, guys, if you're already missing JMU football, I'll have an update on next year's roster from head coach Mike Houston himself. Women's basketball was also in action this week. 
looking to stay perfect in conference play. And softball opens its season outside of the country. All that and more next on Breeze TV Sports Wrap. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. When it comes to saving money, uh, what? don't act like a baby. Oh, it's like they're having their own little meeting. This is so humiliating. Be the boss. I'm the boss. What the? Mm. Power nap. You were saying. And make a budget. Let's get to work. Need a little help? Stacy, read back the notes. I can't read. What's it say? Create a personalized savings plan and get other tools and tips. We can share. You obviously didn't go to business school. At feedthepig.org. This is Breeze TV. Welcome to Breeze TV Sports Wrap. I'm Kevin Rahm. As it is nearly every year, the Super Bowl was nothing short of spectacular last Sunday. Breeze TV's Sammy Seaton has more on the game and on the team who came out on top. Super Bowl 52 was a matchup of the five-time champions, the New England Patriots, against the Philadelphia Eagles, a team that has never won the Lombardi Trophy. Flares out to the right. For a team that faced adversity all season, the Eagles became world champions and were led by backup quarterback Nick Foles after Carson Wentz tore his ACL in Week 13. A lot, a lot of people, uh, a lot like this football team, a lot of people counted him out and didn't think he could get it done. And, you know, I believed in him, the staff believed in him, the players believed in him. You know, this whole postseason, Nick, is, Nick has shown exactly who he is and what he can do and what he's capable of doing. He's well deserved of the honor. But even though Foles saved the Eagle season on the field, he's not taking all the credit. The big thing that helped me was knowing that I didn't have to be Superman. I have an amazing teammates, amazing coaches around me. And all I had to do was just go play as hard as I could and play for one another, play for those guys. Foles had 373 yards of offense, throwing three touchdowns and scoring one himself. The player who was once doubted was named MVP and brought home the trophy for the first time to Philadelphia. Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Sammy Seaton. Thanks, Sammy, and congrats to the two former Dukes on that Eagles roster, wide receiver Rashard Davis and quarterback coach John DeFilippo. It was actually DeFilippo's last game with Philadelphia, as yesterday he was named the new offensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings. This past Wednesday, it was National Signing Day for JMU football. Head coach Mike Houston has spent the last month finalizing the next group of Dukes eager to chase an FCS championship. The new breed is mostly Virginia natives, which Houston thinks will help refuel some in-state rivalries. I think the kids have a lot of pride about where they're from. I think they have a lot of pride about the state of Virginia. For our program, we talk about winning the state of Virginia because you do have in-state rivalries that are uh, you know, some of the top schools in our league and regionally, and that creates some you know, some stuff between the players on our roster that know players on their rosters and that kind of stuff. So um, I think that, you know, having nine signees from the state is probably going to increase some of the intensity of the rivalry with the in-state schools. Some of those signees even turned down offers from ACC schools, Houston said, proving JMU isn't attra just attracting FBS caliber talent, but competing for it. 
we want to be competing against those level of, 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 of schools for our players. Uh, I think JMU is a place that can attract uh, the very best talent that there is in the state of Virginia and regionally. And so if, you know, if we're not competing against schools like that for our players, then we're not, we're not going after the right players. The complete class totals 16, and most will make their debut April 14th at the spring game. JMU softball is in Mexico this week, and no, it's not because they're on vacation. Instead, it's all business in Puerto Vallarta. The Duke's first five games will take place south of the border. As you remember, JMU won its first 12 games, 11 of its first 12 games last season, finishing 18-2 in the CAA and route to a conference championship. However, they will be without National Player of the Year Megan Good for the entire season, so it will be a tough task re repeating as conference champions. And although the JMU men's basketball team is sitting out this week due to the mumps, the women's team hasn't missed a beat. Still perfect 10-0 in conference play, they were in North Carolina this last Sunday taking on Elon. It didn't start off very well for the Dukes as the Phoenix outscored the, the Dukes by 10 after the first quarter and, spent, and the Dukes spent the rest of the game playing catch up. Kelly Kishuda and Kamaya Smalls were the only two Dukes who finished in double figures. Kamaya Smalls, two of her 15, actually came from an alley-oop. The team, as a team, JMU shot just over 21% from the field, and Elon took advantage. They hand the Dukes their first conference loss of the season, 50-43. to 43. Back quick enough. Now, we eventually, I thought, fought back and had a chance to win the game, but it took us longer than I wanted to, and, it, and you put yourself in a huge hole. I just think, statistically, you're not going to win too many games going down 16 points in the first quarter. It's just, just you know, other than miraculous, you're just not going to win too many games like that. The Dukes are now tied for first in the Colonial as Drexel has won its last eight conference games. So JMU doesn't have much more room for error this late in the season. You can catch them tonight, however, at 7 in the Convo as Northeastern visits the friendly city. Well, the Cleveland Cavaliers shocked the basketball universe yesterday. The NBA trade deadline closed at 3 p.m. and the Cavs were making moves up until the last minute. Not often do you see a team reshape their entire roster less than two months before the playoffs start. But here you see those leaving Cleveland. First, Isaiah Thomas, who will now head to the Los Angeles Lakers. They acquired him last season in exchange for sending Kyrie Irving to the Celtics. Dwayne Wade, a sure future Hall of Famer and LeBron James' best friend, also being shipped back to Miami. Two role players in Channing Frye and Jay Crowder were also dealt away. And finally, they sent a former league MVP in Derrick Rose to the Utah Jazz. In return, Cleveland gets a lot younger, adding Jordan Clarkson and a bouncy Larry Nance Jr. from the Lakers. From the Jazz, the Cavs get Rodney Hood and George Hill. So a lot of big changes in what could be LeBron James' last season in Cleveland. The new, look, the new look Cavs first test is tonight as they head to Atlanta to take on a Hawks team dead last in the Eastern Conference. That's it for sports this week. Back to you, Matt and Olivia. Coming up, see how one JMU student is running a bakery from the comfort of her own home. And a fun surprise you might find in your burger this Valentine's Day. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea.
when it comes to saving money... Uh, what? Period. Don't act like a baby. Oh, it's like they're having their own little meeting. This is so humiliating. Be the boss. I'm the boss. What the? Mm -hmm. Power nap. You were saying. And make a budget. Let's get to work. Need a little help? Stacy, read back the notes. I can't read. What's it say? Create a personalized savings plan and get other tools and tips. We can share. You obviously didn't go to business school. At feedthepig.org. This is Breeze TV. Innovation Services is now offering Mad Lab classes held in library computer classrooms. The classes teach topics on technological services that can benefit your resume and your overall skill set. Free one-hour quick start software and media classes are taught by JMU peer teachers and are offered weekly. Class topics include iMovie editing, Adobe Photoshop, WordPress blogs, special effects, video, and more. Instead of looking up a YouTube video, you know, you just come through here, ask questions, and it's really easy and it's fun. Students will continue to take these workshops as an opportunity to expand their expertise while also taking a quick break from their classes to play and learn simultaneously. You may have noticed something different the last time you made your way downtown Water Street. It's the new mural created by downtown Harrisonburg's Oasis Art Gallery. Sarah Locke, the president of Oasis, said the idea for a mural came from Harrisonburg's downtown renaissance office, which offered a grant for the purpose of downtown facade enhancement. Well, we wanted to do something that would kind of enhance the downtown and people to, to actually see some of these buildings that they walk past every day. We tried to pick buildings that had like different aspects of the community. There's a, a church for our this community strong religious ties, the, the courthouse, of course, the, our main structure on the, in the downtown square. Oasis plans on applying for more grants in the years to come in hopes of adding more murals downtown. In the meantime, it's looking for input from artists in the community of what they'd like to see on the next mural. Reality TV icon Kylie Jenner introduced a new member of the Kardashian family. The 20-year-old star of Keeping Up with the Kardashians posted pictures of her daughter on social media this past Tuesday, where she announced that her baby's name is Stormy. Looking for some unique treats in time for Valentine's Day? Breeze TV's Grace James tells us more about how you can support this Jamie student in her self-run bakery. I'm here at the home of Adelina Julian. Adelina is a junior at JMU, and when she's not busy with her studies, she's here running her business, Adelina's Sweet Indulgences. Her love for baking began at a young age when she baked cookies with her grandma. She says although those cookies weren't anything special, they taught her to love the challenge of baking and of trying new things. I like it because it's, it's like a science. You have to get the ingredients in the cake right to make it rise and you have to get the ingredients right in the flavors to get the taste to come through, and I love the challenge of it. She only began her business last summer, but has seen it take off with the help of social media, like her Instagram page, Adelina Sweet Indulgences. It's really cool because I would get them for birthdays or special occasions, and then now everyone's talking to me, and they're like, oh my gosh, you're friends with Adelina, like, that's so awesome. I've tried her cakes, and they're amazing. So she's just growing so fast. She's looking forward to using the next year and a half at JMU to practice and expand her clientele. Reporting in Rockingham County for The Breeze TV, I'm Grace James. On Wednesday, Gerber announced their 2018 Spokes Baby of the Year. Meet 18-month-old Lucas Warren. This cutie made history as the first child with Down syndrome to take the title in the contest's 91-year history. Gerber picked Lucas from more than 140,000 entries to its photo search contest. Lucas will appear on Gerber's social media and advertisements throughout the year. A Boston burger joint is putting a $3,000 burger on their menu this Valentine's Day. For one night only, Polly's Burger Restaurant customers can buy this pricey patty to propose to their special someone. Always we try to do things that are fun. Thought it would be fun to do a burger proposal. Someone who's looking for something different, something fun. I suggest take the, the ring off before you eat the burger. The burger will only be available on Valentine's Day with the restaurant requiring a 48 hour notice from anyone interested in buying it. That's all for today. Until next week, thanks for joining us on Breeze TV.